Commander, I'm, I'm contacting, contacting you from, from across, across the ages. ages. Status report. RTS games are the best gaming there is, but we've been struggling to gain ground on the battlefield. Age of Empires 4 is proving its resilience. Age of Mythology Retold turned out great. We've gotten some strong contenders recently, like Empires of the Undergrowth, 9-bit armies, along with Terminator Dark Fate. Warcraft 3 got updated. Sins of a Solar Empire 2 invaded Steam. And real-time tactics games like Warno released. Plus action RTS like Mechabellum. If those do not suffice, 2025 continues the assault on the real-time strategy gaming genre. The soldiers are marching towards the battlefield, but do you want to command any of them? Let's find out! Entering the battlefield, Empire Eternal. Here we have an action RTS, which is promising to be the ultimate real-time strategy plus war game, where it's encompassing all of human history. So this is feeling a bit like a throwback to Empire Earth, where you're going to ancient times to the modern era of warfare. And this one does seem to have uh, quite a bit of interest in it, particularly because we haven't really gotten an RTS that spans the ages. So this one is one that is aiming to do that. There is supposed to be a single player campaign and competitive multiplayer modes, powerful modding support for maps, units and more. And there's supposed to be all kinds of warfare going on, not just land, naval, sea, but melee combat can have climbing walls, jumping on board enemy ships, and more is being promised here. So Empire Eternal does look very interesting and very promising, but keep in mind that it's action RTS. Now when we're talking about RTS, the genre has split into many different sections these days. So there's full-on auto-battler RTSs, like we mentioned Mechabellum, but Empire Eternal is straddling that line between traditional RTS, but also more action-y RTSs, which are almost real-time tactics games, but not quite. <laughs> so it's a bit hard to pinpoint exactly what this is, so you should have a closer look at Empire Eternal and see if this is the kind of RTS that you want to get into. Staying in history, 400 Catapults, a large-scale survival strategy game with up to 3,000 units on the battlefield. This one has a, well, a lot of catapults, as the title implies, and just massive, massive armies coming at you. And picture the battles from Lord of the Rings. That's kind of what this one is going for. Now, this one is set in medieval times, and you are surviving against these massive invasions. You build up and manage your settlement, you produce resources, you research weapons and technologies, and you recruit your army to survive in the war against half-dead legions. So there is going to be some inspiration here from They Are Billions, which, by the way, is another genre splicing kind of game. And when it first was revealed, They Are Billions, I sort of classified it as a city building game because you stayed put, you built up a city and then you defended against waves of enemies. But people very quickly classified They Are Billions as an RTS or at least a strategy game primarily. So 400 Catapults is clearly inspired by that approach. We've gotten others recently like this as well before. But this one is aiming for a quarter three 2025 release window and the scale and medieval setting alone should be able to attract some of you. There is meant to be a single player campaign here as well, where you're defending your bastion, crafting covert operations, holding the line against waves of enemies, diversionary tactics to distract your enemies, and you'll be unleashing all out assaults on your weakened enemy front lines. So this one is supposed to be difficult and hardcore, but uh, we'll see how this one goes over the next year. With a bit more of a modern setting, Battlefall State of Conflict. This one clearly inspired by Command and Conquer, but with its own twists. It's a post-apocalyptic RTS between three factions, and it'll be coming to early access. But at the time of recording, there is also a free demo for this one, so you can just go check it out. It is planning to be in early access for up to two years, so although this is playable now with the free demo, and it will be going into early access probably relatively soon in the coming months. 
Full release is probably looking at 2027, maybe? For a full, full release, which is a ways away. But that doesn't mean that this game isn't playable now. And through 2025, this should be something that we can get into. Now, this one does have a unique look to it. And I know not everyone is going to be into this particular visual style, but this game is promising a unique upgrade system, building of bases, training your forces, evolving your strategies, and playing these three factions against each other, with three different stories to go through. Besides all of that, there's supposed to be co-op campaigns, level editors, rule editors, faction customization, skirmish modes, and Steam integration for sharing your custom content. So if the community picks this up and stays with it, then Battlefall's State of Conflict could be something that's that's kind of a successor to the Command & Conquer series, which we're just not getting a new game of that. But there's a lot of competition in this list and otherwise for Command & Conquer successors, even from the previous Command & Conquer developers. So Battlefall's State of Conflict has its work cut out for itself, and maybe it can do it. For another action RTS that many seem to be very hyped about, Battle Aces. This is an action-oriented real-time strategy game where you defend your base, advance your tech, and attack the enemy's core. You can customize your unit deck by deploying strategic compositions and fighting your way to become one of the best-in-class drone pilots. So this is an RTS, but a little bit of Mechabellum inspiration in there, but it's not quite an auto-battler. It's still an RTS, and it's planning to be a free-to-play action one. They've gone through some betas and trying to test things out, and people generally seem to be quite interested. This is one of those RTSs which is promising a new paradigm for RTS. And that is a big theme of the RTS genre in the past years. Because RTS as a genre is trying to find its place in the modern gaming scene. Because classic RTS was always very hard to get into. You know, Starcraft, Age of Empires, Warcraft. They were popular, but the RTS genre as a whole was never mainstream mainstream, right? Because it's too complicated, it's too fiddly, the micro can be a problem, the macro can be a problem, and a lot of people don't get into it because it's just too difficult. So the RTS genre ended up in a rut where not enough people played it to fund AAA RTSs. Publishers and developers were thinking, well, if we want to make more money, we'll just make a different kind of game. So the RTS genre has been stuck trying to find its place, and Battle Aces is trying a new approach, which may or may not work, but it's nice to see new approaches being tried, because eventually someone's gonna figure out how RTSs should work in modern gaming. Will Battle Aces be it? Time will tell. Soldier, now that you're a bit into the list, I'm sure you're enjoying it, so it'd be greatly appreciated if you can like the video. And if you want to support, use the GOG referral link below to buy any game. Also, be sure to check out the Patreon for exclusive videos. If you sign up now at the $1 tier, you will lock in that price for everything forever, even after the price goes up. So be sure to legacy yourself at $1, because that's going away soon. Thank you. Alright, next game. Dying Breed. This is clearly inspired by the original 1995 Command & Conquer. If you just squint your eyes a little bit, just a tiny bit, it might look like just a modded version. But Dying Breed is trying to bring some extra things to the table, and we've been watching this one for a while, and it does seem to have more and more promise every time we look at it. This is a fast-paced, strategic, decision-making, base-building, retro-futuristic, 90s-inspired FMV live-action cutscenes RTS. I mean, FMV live-action cutscenes with cheesy acting, I mean, that's sort of something that I think a lot of us have been missing for a long time. And this one does have a lot of Command & Conquer inspirations, obviously, but it has its own twist to the story and the world. There's genetic mutations, zombie-like things, and of course, factions that are fighting over a scarce resource. And if you've been missing the old, classic Command & Conquer, then Dying Breed is going right back to the beginning to try and make a new one in that style. 
it has had some demos and play tests over the past couple years and Dying Breed is showing a lot of promise and I really really hope that it does all come together in something that just works but it's always so hard to predict whether something will really come together at the end of the day. Bits and pieces can be nice, some parts can feel off when the whole final product is put together then we'll have to see how it all turns out as a package. I'm very hopeful for Dying Breed, but we will have to see how it does over the coming year. And then we go to Rogue Command, another classic inspired RTS which is fusing itself with a modern roguelike. Throwing in roguelike and roguelite elements to an RTS is one approach to try and modernize the genre and some have worked better than others. Rogue Command is doing the classic stuff, harvesting of resources, building out your base, raising your army and calling down orbital strikes to overcome the forces threatening your survival. This one has entered early access to few but very positive user reviews. 95% positive at the time of recording, which is very, very high for any kind of RTS these days. 95% positive, even if it's a few reviews, that's still really, really good. And they want to fully release in 2025, so you can have a closer look at Rogue Command, because if people are liking it, then it's worth a look at least. This one is classic RTS gameplay with a roguelike twist. You unlock and discover over a hundred units and buildings as you play through the game and there's also hundreds of upgrades and hacks to modify them. You can call down powerful buffs and orbital strikes. There's crazy synergies that you can put together in every run which is a roguelike feature where it's just sometimes on some runs you get the perfect combo and you just dominate, other times you die almost instantly. That's the whole point of it. And there's over 20 map types, a whole bunch of different enemies, and you can slow down the battle at any time to get an overview. So it's fast paced, but you can take your time and check things out a little bit more carefully to strategize properly. Generally, Rogue Command has hit the ground sort of running, jogging at least, and it looks very promising as it goes through early access now, and you can have a closer look at your leisure. Launching back into history, Age of Respair. This is a medieval strategy castle builder and we've seen something like this already on this list but maybe you want these to compete because the better one will come out on top. You are building up your town inside a castle and there's large armies and laying of sieges and uh, laying of sieges of enemy castles and you will lead your people and bring Respair to your kingdom. This one you do gather resources, grow your population, strengthen your defenses and you are building massive armies. And this is a competitor to Stronghold. There is a story driven campaign and there's skirmishes against AI opponents and you'll be gathering resources like wood, stone and iron and there's happiness mechanics and taxes and fear. So there's clearly some Stronghold inspirations here and a number of games do seem to be trying to take on the Stronghold formula. Age of Respair seems promising, it's aiming for a 2025 release window and maybe it could bring some new ideas to the table or at least another flavor but this versus 400 catapults versus maybe other Stronghold stuff, well we'll see how it all comes together but the hype for Age of Respair is pretty big, they're talking about how they're hitting wishlist goals and maybe this is something that we could get into in the coming year. Flying up into space, era one. Now since the complication of Homeworld recently, a number of RTSs and battle games in general have tried to take that formula to space with its own unique twists. This one is going to be releasing early on in 2025 and Era 1 is supposed to be an innovative space game combining elements of real-time strategy, base building, space survival and tactical battles. So when it comes to space RTS, the base building is always kind of limited if there is any base building at all. There tends to be a central structure and there's a number of upgrades, quite often customizable fleets and ships. And in this one you will be constructing various types of structures and warships, managing fleets 
and the tactical battles in 3D space is always a different kind of flavor compared to the typical RTS, which generally speaking are 2D games. They tend to be on flat planes. There's not really a Z-axis in a lot of RTSs until you get to space, and then this one is gonna have it. So this one is also promising a full story to play through and starship customization so you can reflect your own individual style and play styles as well to make sure you can dominate space in the way you want. And it does seem to have a heavy amount of customization and detail. Now, whether it can fully pull this off that's a lot of promising happening right now, but it is releasing relatively sooner, so we can check it out. And of course, being a space RTS with less base building and maybe more simplified resource collection, it is more on the action RTS side, maybe a bit of a real-time tactics side. It's hard to draw straight hard lines where RTS ends and RTT begins because it can get complicated and confusing. I think if you're into RTSs and especially Homeworld, Era 1 is one that you can have a closer look at. And then we've got one with a very generic name, RTS Tactical Warfare. I mean, I'm not a fan of keywords in titles, but typically the keywords come after an actual title. But this one is just RTS Tactical Warfare. I guess it's called Tactical Warfare. And I don't, this needs some branding, but this is an RTS with army control and unit micro, and you secure your bases, mobilize your troops, and reinforce key positions to get ready for the next battle. This is supposed to be about resilience and tactical prowess. There's many different game factions to play through. The base building is base building, and you do collect resources. There's missions to go through, skirmish, siege survival, and an outmaneuver challenge, where there's no base construction and it's more just about controlling your army and being tactical. So this is sort of an interesting one that's on the table, and it's supposed to be releasing soon. So RTS Tactical Warfare is one that you can have a look at. I'm a little bit cautious about how it's going to turn out, but it is an upcoming RTS. And I think if you're looking for upcoming RTSs, it's one that you should be on your radar. But just have a closer look when it finally does release. Then for one that many people have been talking about and I've listed before for years, I actually skipped listing it for a while, Immortal Gates of Pyre. Now, this is an RTS that we've seen a good amount of gameplay from at this point, and it's a sci-fi, alien-ish, competitive RTS where you embody powerful immortals and you lead armies to dominate the battlefield. We know what this kind of game is like, and we've watched it for many, many years being in development. It felt at a time where maybe it's not even coming, but then they showed off more and people have been playtesting it and People have seen the actual game and it seems to be getting closer and closer to release with no fixed release window yet, but it's feeling like it could have some kind of release over the next year. So Immortal Gates of Pyre, I don't want to get too much into it because we don't know when exactly it'll be releasing. It is supposed to be a bit more of an action RTS as well. It's one that a lot of people have been waiting on and they're very, very hyped for it, especially after the playtests. So. This is one that you can keep an eye on moving forward. For a low poly base defense RTS, Paddle Protectors. This is a mix of tower defense and real time strategy where you're fighting against crabs, bugs, and more kinds of weird animalistic enemies in a low poly world. You establish farms and factories and you produce ammunition and resources and you fortify your land, building trenches and towers, leading your soldiers, tanks and researching new units. This one is supposed to be releasing early in 2025, but there is a free demo right now at the time of recording, so you can just try it to see if it's one that you want to be waiting for. But also, it says it's kind of a tower defense and the tower defense genre has been sort of... Uh, diversifying in recent years as well. And this is They Are Billions S, Stronghold esque, swarm based defense kind of game. So it's interesting, but it's a low poly world, which I know not everyone is into, but also this kind of game might not appeal to everyone, but it is kind of an RTS. 
So Paddle Protectors is one that you might be interested in and with the free demo and soon release date, it's one that you can check out yourself. Now I mentioned real-time tactics games before, RTT. This is Broken Arrow. Typically, I do not list real-time tactics games in real-time strategy games lists. And we've gone through a number of these before, like Warno and a number of other games, which some turned out well, some turned out not so good. Broken Arrow has been coming for a while and it's been pushed into 2025 and typically I would not list this here. But by popular demand, because if I don't list some specific real-time tactics games people get up in arms, I'm going to mention Broken Arrow. Now, to be specific, when I say real-time strategy RTS games, they tend to have resource collection, base building, and army management. That's what the classic RTS is. Real-time tactics games tend to not have resource collection or base building or neither. That tends to just be the army management side. And that's mostly what Broken Arrow is. It's a large-scale real-time modern warfare tactics game. You know, war games, but controlling many, many different types of units. And in this one, there's over 200 plus realistic military units and technologies, and each battle is supposed to be grander and more immersive with endless replayability. And there's a lot of promise here, but there is competition. Warno has already released and Broken Arrow will basically be going up against that. It could be a good competitor to really push both of them forward because some others have not turned out quite so good. There's a lot of customization here, there is unique army compositions you can set up and a powerful scenario editor, so Broken Arrow is continuing to seem very promising. Hopefully, it does turn out good. Going to a very specific historical faction, Roman Empire Wars. This is a game where you'll be guiding your legions to victory in these larger, more Total War-esque battles where you're managing these battalions of soldiers and fighting through the ancient world to conquer land. This is a tactical RTS where you get to conquer Europe and it's sort of historical, leaning more into the historical side, and you are commanding, conquering, and venturing forth, taking part in large-scale epic battles that mimic real-life war campaigns and engaging these foreign armies that stand in your way. Now, when it comes to how this game looks, there is this current thematic style which I find kind of weird that it's ubiquitous in Roman-themed games where the contrast is very high and the games are very orange and dark and I'm not entirely sure why that is. It is reminiscent of 2006 when Brownie Bloom was sort of the main color scheme of games because it was thought of as realistic and I'm not sure why I'm seeing a number of Roman games approach with this visual style. Roman Empire Wars is also doing it but it's got a fixed release date, 14th September 2025. Now remember, when there is a release date, it doesn't mean the game is going to release on that date. It's just a picture of a release date. That's their target. It could release even earlier. It could be delayed. But that's why release dates can't just be thrown out as fixed guarantees. Because even when there's a specific date like there is for Roman Empire Wars, it may or may not release on that day. Will it release in September? Maybe. Roman Empire Wars, it's Total War-esque historical Roman battle RTS. Have a look. Speaking of games that look a bit older, Star Sim Battle Zone. This one is an RTS set in a Star Sim universe and you are commanding an army and leading your faction to victory. There's classic RTS mechanics, building a base, gathering resources, researching technologies, building defenses, training units, all that good stuff, and it is aiming for a 2025 release. This one clearly does look older, and now graphics aren't everything, and when you come to indie developers, there's only so much you can push, right? Not every indie developer can really push the graphics to next-gen graphics. So Star Sim Battlezone really has to rely on good gameplay. And it's unclear whether that can be achieved over the next year. 
because visually it's gonna need some convincing for most gamers these days. There's so many amazing games in the RTS genre as well that are releasing or have released. So Star Sim Battlezone hopefully brings some amazing gameplay. Otherwise, it's maybe just one to watch to be interested in. For another sci-fi RTS that has some heavy interest, a blight. This is a diesel punk, cyberpunk, medieval aesthetic RTS. You join the rebellion against the Zeolotic Inquisition, who have been mankind's scourge for hundreds of years, and you are fighting for survival and freedom. And you're almost there, but there's some things in your way. Now there's a dark law that spans over a thousand years for the story. There's three asymmetric factions for different mechanics and playstyles and strengths. Many different units and buildings. Classic real-time strategy gameplay with base building, resource collection, combat strategy, army micro, all of that good stuff. Ground and air combat. And it's supposed to be exciting and action-packed, but not needing high APM to execute everything. And we've heard this promise before, and some have worked better than others. Not needing the APM for the speed means more things are out of your direct control or don't have to be in your direct control, which lowers the skill ceiling, but maybe also raises the skill floor or lowers the skill floor. It all depends on implementation. Now there's also PVE features, so there's a campaign, there's skirmish, survival mode, sandbox mode, there's PvP features with ranked matchmaking and observation replays and all of that. So generally, a Blight seems to be delivering on all the points of a semi-action RTS. It could turn out nice. There's no specific release window right now, but it is expected over the next year. There's also a lot of competition for games like this, and that's a good thing, because if a lot of these games look similar to you, then that means the best one will rise to the top. More competition means we actually get a good game. Remember, if there's no competition, there's no reason to do better. So let these games battle it out amongst themselves, and we'll see we can pick the top ones. Going to a fantasy world inspired by an older game, Lasaria Fantasy Kingdom Sim. This one's inspired by Majesty. Now, if you don't know Majesty, it's a weird city building RTS game where you don't have specific direct control on your units. You give goals and objectives and you try to hire heroes and units to come fight for you. And then you put bounties for objectives on the map. And there's been a number of games that have tried this formula over the years. Majesty is an interesting classic to look at if you haven't seen it. The Saria Fantasy Kingdom Sim clearly trying to do that formula. They're trying to bring some new ideas as well, not just creating a spiritual successor or a clone of the old game. This one's supposed to have a brand new combat system, hero squads, and other good ideas. They've been doing tests and trying to get feedback to really try and see what players would want from a modern majesty. It's an interesting one, part city builder, part RTS, part kingdom management, and the indirect control does sound weird if you've never experienced it, but it does work in its own unique gameplay style, trying to really encourage people to work for you rather than just being a omniscient god clicking on units and commanding them to do exactly what you say. It's like the opposite of micro. It's like turning micro into macro. It's a cool idea that hasn't worked for a long time, but maybe this one can bring it back. It's aiming for a 2025 release window, and there is supposed to be co-op and multiplayer as well. So Lasaria Fantasy Kingdom Sim, I think it's one to watch for now. In a similar vein, with the indirect orders, Crown of Greed. It is interesting that there's another game here inspired by Majesty, and this one you are mastering an unusual indirect management system, which allows you to skillfully bend your subjects and heroes to your will. You're claiming the throne of Rodavia, building cities, recruiting troops, and expanding your kingdom, and exploiting the power of a coin. 
And this one is very much like Lesaria and just inspired by Majesty, the old game. And this one does have a different look to it, a different world to it. European medieval folk culture is here and mainly it is going to be this unusual RTS gameplay with indirect command systems where you send out orders to and then try to influence people to actually follow your orders. This one also has dynamic combat and magic systems and you are building your own fantasy kingdom here. So Crown of Greed is planning for a quarter to 2025 release window. We'll see if they can stick to that but generally they've been going through some Steam play tests and revealing details and secrets of how this game actually works. It does seem very promising, but City Builder RTS with this indirect combo thing, it's uh, weirdly popular right now, and maybe some of these will turn out quite nice. For a unique theme on an RTS, Arcane Wilds. This is a Western-themed fantasy RTS with a unique twist on resource management. You gather steel and transport resources to use them in battle strategically. You embark on a new journey, survive missions, face mystical creatures, and battle and loot treasures to build and upgrade your home island. This is a unique take. It seems like partly Age of Empires, partly Anno, partly Western heist kind of game. And you know, I've not really seen much like this. Arcane Wilds has released into early access with just a few user reviews at the time of recording this video, but there is also a free demo as well. So this one, the theme alone sets it apart and it may be interesting, particularly with this sort of Western fantasy approach with the creatures and the mystical monsters and this one is supposed to be an early access for two to four years so it could be 2028 for a full release of this one if it does reach full release but for now it's an early access there's a free demo and if you like the theme then there's not really much else like this particularly in the rts space right now then this next one does have some hype to it as well, Annihilate the Spans, an RTS space base builder where you are sort of running constant production and there's supposed to be minimal micromanagement. That means this is a macro RTS. You are directing fleets of autonomous ships in huge battles. There's a single player story campaign, three playable factions and many sub factions. There's a full level editor and it's mainly about macro. So macro, if you don't know, micro is actually doing all the clicks, your APM, your actions per minute, like micromanaging your units on the battlefield. Macro is the economic side of RTS. It's building your base, it's collecting the resources, it's training up the troops. So Annihilate the Spans is a macro RTS, so it's all about the base, resource, and building, right? So. This one does have quite a bit of hype to it. People are sort of looking at this as sort of a macro home world and it will be going into early access early in 2025, looking for a full release somewhere towards the end of 2026, but there is also a free demo right now. So you can just try Annihilate the Spans to see if it's one that you want to wait for into early access. And then you could see more of it to see if you want to jump into it early or wait for full release later on down the line. For a swarmy RTS that a lot of people have been talking up, From Glory to Goo. This is one that we have watched for a couple years and it's a sci-fi survival RTS set on an alien world. It's got more of a classic look to it, but it's got this interesting premise of surviving these swarms, but also running this RTS base defense building kind of game. The Goo are a relentless shape-shifting force that approaches from all sides and you can see that this is sort of inspired by They Are Billions and that sort of subgenre of RTS slash swarm base defense kind of game. This one did enter early access in 2024 to a good few hundred very positive user reviews. So this is not a mainstream success quite yet, but 
Reviews are at over 90% positive, recent reviews at 94% positive. The people who are jumping into this one are really liking it. And there's not even a free demo at the time of recording right now, so you can have a closer look at From Glory to Goo. There seems to be a lot of people liking it. The pixel art aesthetic does seem kind of interesting and nice. Not the prettiest of pixel arts, but it has that retro vibe and just the swarm defense mechanic does seem to be quite popular these days. From Glory to Goo seems to be a safer bet if you like the way it looks. Next up we've got Collapsed Galaxy 2. Human factions face increasingly severe conflicts and the Planetary Defense Council is secretly seeking political power in space and space colonies. Now this is calling itself a 4C RTS, which they're saying stands for Collaborate, Control, Conspire and Conquer. And 4X is an established genre. 4C, I mean, they're trying something. <laughs> Maybe it'll work. Collapse Galaxy 2 is aiming for a 2025 release window and it is a base building RTS real-time tactics kind of game in a sci-fi spacey setting. It does have an older look to it which does sort of make it feel a little bit more dated but also a bit more classic and it's got some interesting points to it and its whole approach is trying to be something a little bit different. You are the Legion Commander and you are customizing and equipping over 2,500 combat components to really customize your armies. You can experience up to 50 players, real-time strategic battles with dynamic territorial control by factions. So that sort of feels like a micro MMO RTS kind of thing. It depends how you define MMO, but this is looking at a lot of players on a, not so much a battlefield, but as a war going on in space. Collapse Galaxy 2 has some interesting ideas, looks a little bit older, but maybe it's something you're looking forward to in 2025. Then for one with very StarCraft 2 vibes, Zero Space. This is saying that it's the first ever RTS where all game modes, single player, co-op, PvE and PvP, are played in a shared MMO Galaxy map. So at first glance, a lot of people said this looks like StarCraft. There's even the space western kind of vibes to it. Where, you know, is that Jim Rayner, uh, Space Cowboy? Uh, but Zero Space, despite it looking like it's heavily inspired by StarCraft 2, does have that interesting MMO setting to it, where even the single player campaign is taking place on the MMO Galaxy map. And that's an interesting, persistent galaxy kind of idea that could be that twist that makes the RTS fit the modern genre of gaming, but maybe not. I don't know. If we have to see how that works out because whenever there's any kind of MMO element, it really relies on lots of people playing. Even if it does continue to work in single player, it, it sort of feels deader if you create the space where, oh, players will make this world feel alive. And then if there's no players, well, the world feels dead. Very hard to get around that problem. Now, this one is supposed to be skilled play without the APM. They say they've spent years testing how this works and you should be able to play how you want, but also not require intensive micro to do what you want. There is the campaign to play through and you can play in all of these game modes. 13 main story missions, 14 hero loyalty missions and 20 side story arcs are being promised. Four main factions with six mercenary factions, a number of heroes and story. There's a lot being promised here, and it does look good. Like, visually, it seems nice and good and futuristic and sci-fi and all of that. But it's a lot being promised. So there's been some free demo weekends, and generally people have been continuing to be interested in it. The first reveals were like, is this a StarCraft clone? But also it's starting to find its own zero space at this point. Over the next year, we should be able to figure out exactly what this is, and whether it lives up to all the promises. And then we've got Industrial Annihilation. This, now this is a factory sim RTS where you are building up a factory like Factorio style to produce 
masses of units to fight on a battlefield. Now, this is from the Planetary Annihilation series. Industrial Annihilation is combining that RTS with factory building, and it, seems, it sounds like a great idea. But people have been particularly cautious of this, because not everyone fully trusts how this is going to turn out. The good news is it will be going into early access, so you can just see how it is by yourself. Now, despite the skepticism from a number of people about this game, they did reach over $200,000 funded on Kickstarter. So this one will be going into early access and being developed over two years. So we're looking at a late 2026 full release for Industrial Annihilation, but it will be playable through 2025 and maybe look at the Steam user reviews before jumping in. But besides that, it is all about this factory building with RTS gameplay and there's going to be a single player campaign with multiple factions to play as well. Generally, the idea sounds solid. What's left is to see how it executes. For another that's gone into early access, God's Sworn. This one does feel kind of like Warcraft, but in a more European fantasy kind of setting. This is a classic mythological RTS with hero units, and it's been in early access for a little bit now to a good few hundred user reviews at over 90% positive. Like, the few people that are jumping in are really enjoying this, and they're going through early access with no specific release window for full release being committed to, but 2025 is on the table. This one has been getting more content through early access, and it generally looks good. Your heroes have abilities, you are building for deities and magical powers, and you're collecting resources and building your base, and there's a co-op campaign as well, so that's always a good point these days anyway. One of the evolutions of RTS to modernize into the new era of gaming is co-op campaigns. Generally, a lot of players love co-op campaigns, and I think it's something that people have always liked, but it was very hard to get them going back in the day. These days, I think any successful RTS is going to have a co-op campaign because it's just a great way to get into it with friends in a sort of single player experience, but with a friend. And that's what a lot of people consider to be good co-op and not just 2v2s on the on the ladder, right? That's too stressful. A lot of friends don't want to jump into 2v2s or 3v3s on the ladder. Even though 3v3s aren't exactly the most serious form of gameplay in the RTS scene, it's not exactly competitive, but it's still too stressful for a lot of people. So co-op campaigns are good to have. Godsworn has that. It's got a nice setting, looks decent, good reviews so far, and we'll see how it develops through early access. For an even weirder setting, Dino Lords. This is an RTS where you gather resources, build fortifications, and command units in defense against invading Danes with their arsenal of fierce dinosaurs. <laughs> it's the Viking Age, that's why there are dinosaurs. Now. This is set in a medieval setting, but the dinosaurs do sort of throw a wrench into the plans. And this is a game that's planning to go into early access for at least a year or more, so there's no particular kind of set release date for this one. And you're building up your stronghold, and you are manning the ramparts, fighting dinosaurs. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of a weird one, setting-wise at least, but it does seem to have some interesting gameplay going for it. Now, we have been watching this for a little bit, and we were sort of expecting it to become more playable a bit earlier, but it seems to be a bit later. But 2025 is definitely on the table for Dino Lords, at least entering early access. Although at first glance, when it was first revealed, it did seem kind of a bit too curated with what they were showing off. They have now shown off a bit more, so Dino Lords, at least something interesting and a little bit different, whether it turns out good or not. Now, I'm a little reluctant to mention this next one, but it's Global Conflagration. This is a game that we have been watching for years, and it's been coming soon to early access for a long time. And it's a sort of semi-modern, real-time strategy game. Think Command & Conquer Generals-esque, 
It was looking very rough for a long time, but now with the more recent footage it's looking better and better as time goes on. The UI is looking better, the gameplay is looking better, the graphics are looking better, and global conflagration seems to be shaping up as this kind of near future action RTS kind of game in a sort of Command & Conquer Generals-esque kind of approach. Having said that, we have been watching this for a long time, and it might become playable in 2025. It's continued to get some demos and playtests and reveals and improvements and updates, and it's been coming along, but I'm not 100% convinced it's going to be 2025. It's just got a very good chance that we finally get something because it's looking more ready. Global Conflagration is looking more ready at this point. Maybe it's just going to be one to watch moving forward, because I do hope the gameplay does turn out good, but it's been a long journey to get to this point. For a similar reason I'm cautious to mention, Red Chaos The Strict Order. Another game that I've been watching for a long time, I've listed this before, trying to be comprehensive for upcoming RTSs. This one is continuing to get more reveals, and it does seem to be better and better every time we see it. Red Chaos The Strict Order is another near-future semi-sci-fi RTS game where it does have, again, more Command & Conquer vibes to it, the more modern ones. Maybe we'll get this in 2025? It's another one that's a good chance it's looking more ready at this point, and I really do hope that we get more playtime and reveals and more specific experiences with this game as well, because Again, we've been watching Red Chaos, The Strict Order, for a long time. But the newer reveals do look relatively impressive. Like, visuals, sound-wise, gameplay-wise, it's, it's coming together. And I do hope, like the last one, that this one does turn out good. Because we could always do with more good RTSs. But we'll see how Red Chaos, The Strict Order turns out moving forward. For a classic game definitely inspired by older Command & Conquerors, but also some other classic 90s RTSs. Dorf. Real-time strategy conflict. Now, again, I'm not a fan of putting keywords in your titles, but Dorf is something that a lot of people are more and more hyped about every year. I have listed this for a little while now as well, and it does have that classic, specifically mid to late 90s vibes for RTSs. Just visually, it looks like 1997, very specifically around that era, you know? Not quite older like 95, not quite modern like 98. It feels like 96, 97. And Dorf has taken that Command & Conquer formula, and you are now constructing sprawling bases, scouring the land for resources, mining, refining, and assembling your powerful armies of land, air, and sea units, and you'll be smashing your adversaries. Generally, if you're an older gamer, this looks very nostalgic. And if it's modern gameplay with quality of life improvements, but this nostalgic vibe, I think a lot of people will be into it. This isometric kind of RTS, uh, it's just, it just takes you back. But just being nostalgic isn't going to be good enough to make a good game. You have to actually have a good game. Dorf has been shaping up with more reveals, and it is again looking better and better over time. Hopefully we get to see and play this relatively soon. For Totally Not Dune, Barkin, which apparently means Dune anyway. <laughs> this is an RTS that's not set on Arrakis. This is not Dune. You are just collecting an orange resource on a desert planet with giant sandworm things and there's great clans trying to dominate the resources. This is not Dune. <laughs> it is an RTS, a sci-fi RTS set in this Barkan universe, and I generally wouldn't be keeping to list all of these games that I've listed before over so many years, but this one does have a free demo, so people are jumping in and trying it at least, and it is continuing to get relatively regular updates on what's being made and what's being done. So Barkan is promising, but also it's sort of interesting how the latest Dune RTS, Spice Wars, is not a classic RTS, it's more of a 4X RTS, 
So we are sort of starved for a modern Dune classic RTS, right? Because Dune is coming out with a lot of official games. They've got their survival game, which is sort of an MMO. They've got their RTS 4X-ish thing with Spice Wars and some others in the works apparently, but Barkan is gonna try and fill that classic RTS need, but in a totally not Dune setting. And it might be able to do it, but uh, we're hoping for a release sooner rather than later at this point. Now, being comprehensive, I do want to mention Liquidation as well. This is a game that I listed years ago, and then development stopped, and then development picked up again. This is an indie dev, so things happen, right? And Liquidation is an interesting sci-fi looking RTS, which is supposed to be sort of a classic vibe and it's meant to be coming into early access and it is still being developed with updates being published, like better pathfinding, better graphics, more units, more maps. They're, they're being revealed over time and there's a lot to this game. It's just taking a long time to come together. Because, again, it's an indie dev, and there was a massive delay earlier on as well. The estimate was to have some kind of release in 2024, that's not happening. 2025, therefore, is now on the table, since the target was 2024. 2025, even if you go to a year's delay, it should be somewhat playable in 2025. Hopefully an early access release, at least. And I have played a demo of Liquidation in the past, way back when. And it was sort of okay. It sort of feels like a mix between StarCraft 2 and WarCraft 3 in a space sci-fi fantasy kind of setting with aliens and all of that magic stuff. And it's got promise. Just don't hold your breath for liquidation. But maybe in the future it could be something. Now this next one is a spacey RTS with a weirdly nostalgic vibe. It's called Space Tales. And it's a retro-futuristic alien environment. You are in charge of the intergalactic planetary expansion, and you are immersing yourself into this brutal but comedic world. <laughs> you know, and maybe that's what's sort of bringing me back to the 90s, where there was a lot of dark comedy, a lot of grim but funny settings and aesthetics, right? Space Tales is sort of leaning into that vibe and aesthetic, and it's sort of an interesting way to do it. Now, you are going to be going through 16 main missions in a campaign in this game. There's unlocking research points, encountering a diverse myriad of alien races, there's various characters, and you try to figure out some secrets as you play through these missions. And it's an RTS game with all of the good stuff that you can expect. But there is a free demo as well for this as well. So there's no fixed release window for a full release at the moment, but Space Tales does have a free demo, so you can just try it and see how it's going. And I do sort of expect some kind of release in 2025. We've been watching this for a little bit now, and 2025 feels right for it. No guarantees on that, but there is a free demo, so it is sort of playable right now. Going to a voxel world, Heart of Muriat. This is an RTS 4X kind of game in a blocky world. So if you don't know, 4X means explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. And it's generally meant for games like Civilization, right? Those kinds of 4X games. A 4X RTS tends to be an RTS game with lots of units, base building, resource collection, army management, but on a slightly grander scale. And that's what this is. The grander scale is allowed by the voxel world. Now, voxel worlds are just more efficient visually in terms of hardware requirements. So you can tend to have more units, larger worlds, and everything can be bigger. So that's what Heart of Muriat is doing in this magical, wizard-filled, domain management, spell researching kind of game. And you are amassing these fantasy armies to try and achieve victory, to reunite this realm. It's been going through some playtests and trying all of that. It's aiming for a quarter one 2025 full release, so things should be well on the way at this point. There's a map editor, a story to play through, lots of different units and buildings and quests to experience, and generally it feels like 
what it's supposed to be. Now, whether you like voxels or you like the setting or you like this type of gameplay, that's up to you. But Heart of Muriet seems to be hitting what their objective is. Now, it's hard to talk about RTS games without speaking of bar, beyond all reason. Now, this is a game that's inspired by Supreme Commander and Zero K, and it's this grand sci-fi RTS game where you're fighting with massive armies on massive battlefields with a lot of detail. And this one we have listed for a long time because it's been going through an alpha phase, but it's playable right now. And whenever you talk about new RTSs that are good, people generally mention Beyond All Reason. Even though it's probably never gonna fully release at any point, this can easily be a 15-20 year project. It's been very indie but grand development and it does just keep adding more stuff, it keeps getting better, it keeps just growing and growing and growing. And if you do like those sorts of old games like Supreme Commander and Zero K, then Beyond All Reason is the successor that I think most people are leaning into. Now, we've listed this for a long time, so we don't need to get into too many details here. You can check it out for yourself. You can see on screen what it looks like. Generally, the people who are jumping in, they're getting what they want. So Beyond All Reason, B-A-R, you can check it out. Now this next one did sponsor me in the past, so keep that in mind, but we're not sponsored here. It's called Eyes of War. This is an RTS with base building, resource collection, and army management, but there's a unique twist where you can jump down and possess a specific unit and then control your army from third person perspective and actually control this unit which you've possessed. And by possessing that unit, that unit becomes a super unit. So you become the hero units in this game. It's an interesting premise and like possessing a unit in Dungeon Keeper, but also you're possessing a unit and controlling a unit in a full-on RTS experience like Savage, the battle for New Earth. It's some interesting ideas and this one has released into early access to very positive user reviews, just a couple hundred at 90% positive. So it's a niche experience right now. But there's some interesting ideas in there. There's some roughness to it going through early access. But being able to possess these units as even modes like arena battles and skirmishes and multiplayer. And there's four nations to pick from with different units and structures. And you build walls and towers. So it's like a classic RTS. But this possessing mechanic is really what sets it apart. And it's got some interesting ideas. Eyes of War. Something you can check out. See for yourself. Next up, we have Sanctuary Shattered Sun. Another one that we have been watching for a number of years. And again, every time we see it, it looks a bit better than the last time we saw it. And being comprehensive, I do have to mention this one because it's starting to look kind of really good. This is a game where you are controlling vast armies across the surface of a star encompassing Dyson Sphere. And it's calling itself a next-gen RTS where you are creating invasion routes, controlling hundreds of units in your quest to dominate humanity's greatest megastructure, the Dyson Sphere. This one has been coming for a while now. It's had some updates and improvements and a lot of stuff showing getting better and better and better. And there's supposed to be a free demo coming in 2025 for this game. So we're not looking at a full release for Sanctuary Shattered Sun in 2025, but a free demo that finally allows everyone to jump in and play. Now, there's a number of things that we can watch for here. First of all, is the gameplay actually good? Does it look as good as the trailers do now? Because the first reveals of Sanctuary Shattered Sun a number of years ago didn't look all that impressive. They're looking impressive now. And with the scale of the number of units and projectiles and everything going on, performance is going to be a pain point if they don't get the optimization right. There's supposed to be cutting edge technology that ensures the performance is smooth. Thousands of units clashing without your PC crawling. That's a big promise and maybe hopefully they can do it. I'd like to see the tech work first myself in the free demo they release later on. So Sanctuary Shattered Sun, the sci-fi grand scale RTS is very promising and we will see what the demo delivers. 
Okay, now we got the Command and Conquer spiritual successor that is the most hyped, Tempest Rising. This is a near future sci-fi RTS that we have checked out with some demos before and it's looking great, playing well so far, and generally people seem to be enjoying what they're seeing. Tempest Rising is promising what everyone wants a new Command and Conquer to be, but we were sort of expecting it in 2024 and it's now likely a 2025 release. This game has the classic resource collection inspired by 90s and 2000s RTS, base building, army micro, upgrades, all of that, three asymmetrical factions, two single player campaigns with cutscenes and animations between, the skirmish, custom games, ranked multiplayer matchmaking and all the good stuff. There's been going through some closed beta and demos and testing. It looks great. And the premise is just Command and Conquer, right? Like the, the resources, the factions, everything sort of comes together. And we've tried some demos of this and the mission variety is quite diverse in terms of what you're doing mission to mission. So Tempest Rising has been shaping up for a long time and the hype is real, and maybe that's why they're just taking their time with it. There's no specific release window right now, but we were sort of very heavily expecting it in 2024. We're now very, very heavily expecting it in 2025. Hopefully it does release as expected and delivers on everything that people are expecting of it. And now I'm just going to vaguely talk about Stronghold for a little bit because we know they're making a new Stronghold game called Stronghold Next. And there's been some improvements with what we're getting from Stronghold in recent years. Stronghold Definitive Edition released and for full transparency, this has sponsored me in the past. I've worked with Firefly Studios with a number of sponsorships in the past. So just keep that in mind as I talk about Stronghold. But generally speaking, we can be expecting more from Stronghold moving forward. We've been waiting a couple years for what Stronghold Next is supposed to be. Hopefully we at least get a reveal in 2025. It is very primed for a new Stronghold game as well. Now I can't guarantee that Stronghold Next will be releasing. We don't even know the full title or setting of the next Stronghold game, but the definitive edition for the first game was very popular and we're now sort of waiting to see what the next Stronghold experience is supposed to be because the series has had its ups and downs. Some have not really been all that popular in the Stronghold series, but the definitive edition picked back up in terms of popularity. So we'll see what they do next, but Stronghold next, that reveal, it's gonna be a wait and see to see what it actually is, but we should know something in 2025. And then, yes, of course, I do have to mention Mana Lords. It blew up in 2024 in Early Access. It is a medieval strategy game with city building and RTS elements, large scale tactical battles, complex economic simulations, all of that. I have mentioned Mana Lords countless times and looked at it specifically in a dedicated video. So we all know what Mana Lords is. And although some people do say that it's somewhat overhyped, it is a very good looking game with solid gameplay in my opinion at this point. It is still going through early access, though have to say that updates do come slow. The developer did say they want to take their time and get it right. So updates aren't the fastest, but since its early access release earlier on in 2024, it has been improved quite significantly. Like after all this time, it's actually gotten much better and it is looking at a full release in 2025 so mana lords should finally be complete over the next year and then i can stop listing it as an upcoming game and y'all can stop telling me to list it <laughs> mana lords you can play it now it's generally very popular the 50,000 user reviews on steam are putting at at almost 90 percent positive so people have been loving it and it did really blow up when it first entered early access. So we can expect it to continue to get updates and improvements in early access until its full release. And then if it really nails the improvements, it's going to blow up again on full release. So we'll see how that goes for Mana Lords. Now, I'm also going to mention Falling Frontier. 
This is one that I've listed for many years, not just because it's been an upcoming game, but because it's stated so many years as release windows. I'm sure it's said that it was supposed to be releasing in 2021, 2022, 2024, I'm sure it was supposed to be releasing, and then it just keeps getting delayed and pushed back, and now it just says coming soon. And it might release in 2025, but I'm not holding my breath for Falling Frontier. People have been super hyped for this. It does have a publisher, it is being developed, it does have regular updates and reveals, so we see things getting better and... Uh, but uh, the release windows just keep changing. That's why when a game says it's going to be releasing in 2024, it doesn't mean that it will actually release in 2024. So now my only option is to keep somewhat mentioning Falling Frontier because it may or may not release. And it doesn't really matter what it says when it comes to when it's actually supposed to release. They might change the release date to 2025 and then at the end of 2025 they say nope it's back to coming soon. <laughs> so. We may or may not get Falling Frontier this year, and we may or may not get Falling Frontier every year. But it is a sci-fi space RTS that's upcoming and seemingly still in development, so you can keep an eye on it. And finally, for the most controversial RTS release recently, Stormgate. Now this is from Frost Giant Studios, which are old ex-Blizzard developers. They worked on StarCraft and they came along and they raised millions and millions of dollars. Not to a AAA point, but like tens of millions of dollars to make Stormgate. And it released into early access to mixed reviews, like floating around 50%. It's 50-50 on people liking this game and not at the start of early access. So it's got a long way to go. Now some problems have been that the game is just it is really early access, like it's underdeveloped, there's visual bugs, there's gameplay limitations and a lot of weirdness with the experience in terms of the story and the gameplay loop and just in general, it feels kind of strange playing through Stormgate. So it is a free to play game, which means they're looking at other monetization methods. And it does have a lot of promise, but really, maybe the hype was too big for this, maybe the expectations were too high, uh, but this is going to be one where I think it's just going to need a bit more time. And this one is supposed to be an early access for at least a year. I sort of expect it to be a bit longer, but you can play this through 2025 if you like. It is free after all, so you don't have to pay any money to try it. It's just there. You can download it and play Stormgate no problem, and then let them know what feedback you have. Even then, it didn't really blow up quite as big as people were expecting. And I think most people are just waiting on Stormgate. Get to full release, and then we'll check back, right? Because it's clearly not ready quite yet, but it might be something great in the future if they figure out all the problems and come up with good solutions to all the problems. That's going to be a journey for Stormgate. Alright, that was a massive invasion of games. Which one was your favorite and do you think any others deserve a mention? This is of course just one list of many that I've made. Maybe the game you're looking for is in another video on the playlist. Check that link on screen and down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.